Hello, let's say we have two measurements A and B with uncertainties of delta A and delta B. And we use the measured values to calculate X. What would the uncertainty of X be? In other words, how would the uncertainties of A and B propagate to become the uncertainty of X? Well, it depends on the specific calculation actually. So if you are doing X goes to A plus B, then delta X is delta A plus delta B. This is quite intuitive. I think I don't have to explain this. What if we are doing x goes to a minus b? Then delta x is still equals to delta a plus delta b. Why is that so? So now let's go back to this and ask ourselves how we arrive at this. So it's because the maximum value of x happens when both a and b are at their maximum values. And the minimum value of x occurs when both a and b are, in, uh, are having their minimum values. So the maximum positive deviation is delta a plus delta b. And the most negative deviation is also delta A plus delta B. That's why delta X is delta A plus delta B. Let's use the same logic onto this, uh, X goes to A minus B. But this time round, the maximum value of X occurs when A is the maximum value and B is the minimum value. And the minimum value of X occurs when A is the minimum but B is at its maximum. So because of that, we have the double negative here and the minus plus here. And because of that, the maximum positive deviation is also delta A plus delta B. And the most negative deviation is also delta A plus delta B. That's why delta X is still delta A plus delta B, not minus. What if we are doing X goes 2A minus half B? Ah, then delta X is 2 delta A plus half delta B. The 2 here is easy to explain. 2A is just A plus A, right? So since A is added two times, its uncertainty should have the weighting of 2 as well. The half here has the opposite effect. It does not scale up the uncertainty of B. In, uh, instead, it shrinks it down, right? By a factor of half. And remember, whether it's plus or minus, you sum up the uncertainties. Okay, what if we are doing X goes to A times B? If you have watched my previous video, then you know that now we should be working with uh, fractional uncertainties. So delta X over X is delta A over A plus delta B over B. What if we are doing x goes to a divided by b? Then delta x over x is still equals to delta a over a plus delta b over b. So it doesn't matter whether you are multiplying or dividing. The logic is similar to what we had just now. If you are doing x goes to a times b, maximum x happens when you have a and b both at the maximum and minimum x occurs when both a and b are at the minimum. And because of that, whether you are on the positive side or negative side, you can deviate by delta A over A plus delta B over B. When you're doing X goes to A divided by B, then the maximum value of X happens when A is maximum, but B is minimum. So you divide by the smallest possible value of B. And the minimum value of X happens when A is minimum, but B is maximum. Because of that, the double negative things happens again, and the minus plus happens here again. And therefore, whether you're on the positive or negative side, you're off by delta A over A plus delta B over B. Okay, let's move on. What if you are doing x goes to 3a divided by b? Then delta x over x is still equals to delta a over a plus delta b over b. Then you ask, hey, what is this 3 doing here then? Well, this 3 uh, doesn't affect delta x over x at all. There are two ways I can explain this. The first way is, well, this 3 is going to scale up your delta x by 3 times, right? But it's also going to scale up your value of x by 3 times. So 3 divided by 3. So delta x over x is not affected. The second way to explain this is to see this as uh, C3 as just another term that you are multiplying together. So you should be adding delta 3 over 3 here. But what is delta 3? What is the uncertainty in the value of 3? Zero. Because 3, unlike A and B, 3 is not a measured value. And therefore, it doesn't have any uncertainty. It's the perfect 3. So delta 3 over 3 is zero, which means, yep, delta x over x is not affected at all. So is there anything that will scale up your uh, fractional uncertainties? Yes, there is. It's the powers. So if you are doing x goes to 3 times a squared divided by square root of b, then delta x over x is 2 times of delta a over a plus half times of delta b over b. This 2 here comes from the power of 2 in a square. a square is just a times a. So since a is multiplied 2 times, delta a over a should have a weighting of 2. Whereas the square root, the square root is just a power of half, right? b to the power of half. So instead of scaling up the uncertainty, it actually scales it down uh, with a, uh, by a factor of half. Again, whether you're multiplying or dividing, uh, the square root at the bottom is actually a power of negative half, right? 
So whether you are multiplying or dividing or whether it's a power of positive half or negative half, it doesn't matter. You put a positive sign here. The uncertainties always sum up. So this page here basically uh, encapsulates everything I've said in this video. If you're summing up terms, you sum up the absolute uncertainties. If you're multiplying up terms, you sum up the fractional uncertainties. Whether you're adding or subtracting, whether you're multiplying or dividing, it doesn't matter. The uncertainties always add up. Actually, it will be totally illogical if you put a minus sign here because you are throwing in more measurements. You are throwing in more uncertainties into your calculation. So the uncertainty in the calculated value should only increase. It shouldn't decrease. That's why uncertainties always add up. Then remember the coefficients uh, are like the scaling factors. But here, be careful, the 3 here uh, doesn't do anything to delta x over x. It's the powers that are the scaling factors. Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!